extremes in the desert. You know, we're all given faces. No. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> that was a shock, wasn't it, though? <laughs> we have faces. No, but we're all given by God a measure of faith. We're given a certain portion, you know, maybe a, a cup full or a, a plant full or, you know, whatever it may be, but, you know, we're all given a measure of faith. And accordingly, we operate according, accordingly, we operate according. We've got an accordion going and we're playing it. But by the faith that we've been given, we choose to trust, which is the action of faith, in God or do things that we can't normally do by that faith that we've been given. Sometimes some people seem to have this great faith, you know, that they can do all these things, you know, and they're wonderful. And other people have very little faith, you know, that they have to pretty much trust in what they can see, touch, and feel, you know. And I know that in the old days, you know, to put it bluntly, you know, if you were able to, you know, go out and work, you were happy. It didn't matter how much money you were making. It mattered the fact that you had a job, you know, so you were more than happy to go out into the fields, you know, and work from sunup to sundown. And for myself, you know, I've gone out into the potato fields at a time, you know, and, and harvested potatoes, you know, and then I've been a truck driver for potatoes and pulled them into the sheds, and then I've been a sorter for potatoes and threw the clots out, you know. So I know what it means, you know, to put these hands to to the work, you know, and I was happy for the work because at the time I saved the money and I went to Israel and lived there for a while and worked while I was there. But at other times, you know, I have been blessed in working for an enormous amount of money where, you know, people told me, hey, you know, you're a journeyman boiler maker, you know, we want you to do this, but we don't want you to work too hard or too fast. This is a contract job. So just do, you know, and get the job done. And you know, we're, we're here for the duration. So I went, well, all right, you know. And when I had more money, then I trusted God less, it seemed like. And I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when I trusted God more for my daily needs, even. So there's this idea right now, especially when economies get tough, that, you know, it's a bad thing because you're out of work or you're down to, you know, you live from paycheck to paycheck oh that's so terrible or is that more like faith in god to provide that he's provided a paycheck you see we all have a measure of faith and for some we will you know only trust the lord when we can see and touch and feel it but some of us you know trust him because we've been through the experiences of life and we know that we can trust him whether we are prosperous or whether we're impoverished and so then we make choices based upon that experience when God tells us to, to say, hey, you know what? I can walk away from this high paying job that's taking me away from what God wants me to do so that I could be with him and sharing what the reality of knowing God in a personal, intimate way is and trusting him to provide for me as he said he would. And you know, I don't know about you, but I found that even though I went hungry at times, I was more enjoying the presence of the Lord in my poverty than I was in my prosperity. And so I'm not ashamed to say that, hey, you know, at times when you're broke, guess what? God is there. When you're prosperous, guess what? God is there too. But will you be distracted in your prosperity or will you be distracted in your poverty? Because God wants you to have faith in Him in both. And so don't let circumstances tear you up and shred your faith just because you don't have the same faith that somebody down the street looks like they do because they've got suits and ties and shiny new cars or someone down the street has a lot of miracles, you know, and they're like, wow, you know, they were delivered from dying. And, you know, guess what? They they don't have much, but boy, they sure have a love for God, you know, or somebody like me who's been in both, and I say, you know, they've got their issues, and they got their issues, and both have issues, and we all have issues, and all we got to do is take our issues to be with Jesus, and it'll be okay. 
Because we all have a certain amount of faith, and that's the truth. If you want to have more faith, you're probably going to want to get rid of a lot of the things that distract you. In Streams in the Desert, blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. How strong is the snare of the things that are seen, and how necessary for God to keep us in the things that are unseen. If Peter is to walk on water, he must walk. If he is going to swim, he must swim. But he cannot do both. If the bird is going to fly, it must keep away from fences and the trees and trust to its buoyant wings. In other words, to fly, it must flap. Because it ain't going to walk and fly, it will flap and fly. But if it tries to keep within easy reach of the ground, it will make poor work of flying. God had to bring Abraham to the end of his own strength and let it and to let him see that in his own body he could do nothing. He had to consider his own body as good as dead and to take God for the whole work. And when he looked away from himself and trusted God alone, then he became fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. This is what God is teaching us, and he has to keep away encouraging results until we learn to trust without them. Then he loves to make his word real in fact as well as in faith. Because anyone can really have faith when they can see it and you know for a certain amount of time in your life you may need to do that but there comes a time at some point where you trust in the lord with all of your heart you don't lean into your own understanding at all in all of your ways you acknowledge him and then he directs your path and he usually directs it in a way that you don't see how it's going to work out or what's going to be accomplished and there will be things that will give you that are bigger than you are so that you won't go there, but you'll go the other way because it'll give you a way around it or some way of being able to persevere through it that, you know, of course you can't do it, but with him you can go either through, around, or by it. And he will provide that wisdom to be able to choose the right path in the time that is needed. But when you look at it, when you can see it, when you know it, and you know that, you know, it's too big then usually you don't go to faith with it, do you? Or do you? You see, the older you get, like me, when you see something that's too big to handle, you love it. It's like, yeah! What are you going to do, God? Oh, I got cancer? I can't deal with it, can I? What are you going to do about this one, Lord? Oh, I got an incurable disease? I'm supposed to die before 30? Wow, Lord, praise the Lord. What are you going to do about it? See, sometimes seeing gives you the opportunity to believe in what is unseen because you know who it is that's taking care of it. So it may not be that seeing is believing in the way that you want to make it to be, but you can still use that expression if you learn how to trust in who you can't see to make it real for you. It's kind of a fun thing. Try it sometime. You might enjoy it, or maybe you just have to believe in what you can only see and you're going to have a hard time with knowing God when he's sitting right next to you. And he wants to speak and reveal himself to you in a more intimate and personal way than you ever thought imaginable today.